All right. So thinking about um, kind of lifestyle and stuff away from the track and how that helps with your training, like d- how closely do you monitor your things like your, your sleep and your nutrition? Like every now and then I see you like post a meal on your Instagram and stuff like that. Like, is it something that you feel like you have to pay a lot of attention to? Yeah, I would say I feel like <clears throat> it's been really helpful being in Italy because the food there is just so fresh. Okay. And I feel like it's just a lot better than when I was in the States. <laughs> so controlling my weight and my nutrition has been a lot better, especially with like, we make sure that we have our diet plans and stuff like this, making sure we're eating the right food groups, um, organizing our meals. So I would say that yes, is something that I do take pretty seriously and very conscious about it. Mm-hmm. But I wouldn't say it's something that I obsess over. Yeah. So I'm happy to just make sure I'm sticking to my food groups, make sure I'm sticking to my portion sizes um but not like obs- obsessing about it I'm just not gonna obsess about that but um yeah I feel like it's pretty important to stick to a plan and a guide mm-hmm. um just so you can be fueling your body in the most optimum way obviously the way we train is so hard you need to make sure you're replenishing and just putting the nutrients back in and not leaving it all on the track <laughs> but um and in terms of sleep yeah I would say I'm pretty much I'm pretty strict in my sleep Okay. Not pretty strict, but I nap a lot. I like to be in bed before by ten thirty. Okay. So I think that's quite important, especially just making sure in your in your routine and just being as rested as you can for training. You just want to put yourself and your body in the best possible position to recover, to be able to handle the training load. And um I think rest is important because Although it might sometimes seem like, oh, I'm not racing for 10 weeks because it's the winter and, you know, you might kind of want to have a bit of free time here and do this and that. I think it can catch up with you later in the season. And when the season starts, like indoors, when in- indoor starts, that's it. There's no rest until October, really. Yeah. Um, you have a little short break between indoors and outdoors, but really it doesn't stop. And having like the winter when you're just based in one place for like three months, I think is good because you can really just get all your rest in and kind of get yourself together because when you start competing there's a lot of flying traveling last minute changes there's so much going on and for me personally I need the energy to do that Mm -hmm. (laughs) um so yeah I try and just stay as mellow as possible really so I can just get myself ready for the season it's to be fair last season was crazy because there was three championships yeah that was very back to back so this year probably won't feel the same but I've, every year I've gotten a lot better. I've been able to kind of make my season go on for longer. Whereas back in the day, it's like once you're finished at the Olympics or the World Champs, you're done. You end your season. But now it's like, no, there's still a Diamond League final. There's still races to the end. And I've done really well these last two seasons to race to like the last race. I did Bellinzona last year. I yeah. think that was one of the races. So I'm doing better in terms of my stamina. And but I feel like I, you've kept your performance level up as well. Sorry, I know. I, I, I just yeah, no, it's there, but like it's, it's, it's not like sometimes you see people run at the Olympics and then they, they, they go to the next and they do very well at the Olympics and they go to the next yeah. meet and then th- their times, I don't want to say fall off a cliff, but there's a noticeable yeah. decline. Whereas I feel like that's not really been the case with you so much. Yeah. And I feel like I've really locked into that mentally to be like, OK, you have a champs and then you have to go again. You have to go again and you don't stop until your last race. It doesn't now mean because you've been at a champs, you're just going to start to relax and whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, I've tried. Re- I've, I've had to try to do that. I've had to mentally consciously be like, no, we're going to keep going. We're not tired and make sure that when I'm given my off season, I rest because <laughs> it's so easy to be doing so many things. And I think just knowing the kind of program that I'm in now, like with Marco, I need to be ready and rested. <laughs> yeah. I personally get tired. Everyone's different, but I like to just chill as much as I can and then kind of use my energy when I need to on a race day. Yeah. I mean, I always look with, with rest, like that's when the improvements take place. So if I'm talking about between sessions, like, Okay. You, you break yourself down in a, in a workout or in a training session and then you get the benefits like you don't get the benefits of that session unless you recover from it so yeah. like that, that's a really important part of the equation and it sounds like you just you've got a very kind of what I would call perhaps like a common sense approach to, to both your, your your sleep and your nutrition like it doesn't sound yeah. like you're, you're, you're tracking calories or I don't know if you're tracking yeah. sleep and stuff like that but it's just like you, you you spoke about routine so you're just putting into place like good common sense habits yeah because I think balance is good but 
I like to think of things of having an accumulation. So if I've accumulated this much rest, yeah. being consistent with my nutrition and just consistency, I think the end product is good instead of like having periods of being on it and then maybe slacking off and then maybe, yeah, you know, yeah. I'd rather just be consistent and be mindful because yeah. you are going to get the odd day when, I don't know, you've got to do something or you miss a flight and then you come in late and then, you know, yeah. you have these odd days. But I think consistency is key and just being mindful. Okay, yesterday I came in really late, so maybe tomorrow I'll make sure I prioritise resting a bit more and yeah. maybe not do something else that I might have done. So I like to just be mindful. Yeah, I always, yeah, yeah. I'm always talking to myself like, am I on track, basically? Okay. Always. I love yeah. looking in the mirror and just taking accountability. That's me. Good. <laughs> yeah, I think I think more people need to do that, to be honest. Um, yeah. and, and I think that kind of you spoke about it as well like you use the word you don't obsess about it and I think that that's like that's a risk as well like if you're really really on it then you do become obsessive and then that's a slippery slope as well and it's like oh my yeah. god my Fitbit says I only got six and a half hours sleep last night oh, today's gonna be a terrible day and and that's it's... my approach who knows like as I keep improving and evolving I might change but I just feel like mental health is so important and <laughs> I don't want to I want to positively reinforce myself all the all the time and talk nicely to myself and that's when I'm going to get the best out of me yeah because especially like <clears throat> in track and sport and elite sports there's so many different variables you don't want to get to a point where if you've missed one thing you start thinking oh no if I didn't do that now I can't do that do you know yeah. what I mean you need to know that against all the odds I did it that's yeah. kind of how I like to approach things so if I can just be kind of balanced uh, mindful and steady I'd rather take that approach than obsessive uh, obsessing over one thing and then forgetting something and then feeling like oh no I can't do it now because I just didn't do that and now yeah. do you know what I mean you've got to be careful but everyone's different I think <laughs> I think that's good general advice like balance steady I think that's um I, I think yeah, that's the third word you used as well I can't remember what it was yeah. but that's a good advice yeah because some days are just not good days <laughs> yeah. do you know what I mean you can this happens to everybody you see some amazing performances on the track but you have no idea what the athlete went through the night before they still come out run a pb yeah. and do what but you've got to know and have that kind of confidence that crap like my bag got lost yesterday yeah. i have to still run there's so many things that can happen yeah. not to think negatively but you've just got to be able to just run get on with it <laughs> control the controllables right control basically, the things you can control basically and i feel like that's what i'm very locked into i yeah. don't I'm not going to react to too many things. I'm going to react to the gun. That's it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, so, so speaking about reactions then, mm. what is your least favorite track session? So how do you react? Is there something that you see on a piece of paper that Marco saying to you, right, Daryl, we're doing this today. And your reaction is, oh, I don't know if I'm going to go to, I don't know if I'm going to go to the track. Is there. What, In my what... head, probably every day. <laughs> but, um, I'm definitely a lot better now. Like, I don't fear anything. I come to the track ready to basically die every day. Okay. And um, he can say anything now, I'll do it. Uh, touch words, like, I've completed every single session he set this year, which is a great improvement for me. I haven't tapped out. I haven't had too much lactic where I can't go on, you know. Okay. This is this is me seeing that I'm improving as an athlete. I'm getting better. My tolerance is building mm -hmm. mentally. I'm stronger. He can say however many two fifties, three hundreds, whatever. I know I'm going to complete it. I know I'm going to be on the floor for five minutes after I wanted to be sick, but I know I'm going to still finish it. And I wasn't okay. always there. So that's already me seeing that my maturity, I'm, I'm a lot yeah. more mature. Um, the way I'm tackling things is different. My mindset has changed. There's so many things that have improved. And I think they affect my performance now because I'm on the start line thinking I've done everything I know I need to, like I've done everything I can do and yeah. I can only do my best now, you know? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So am I right in thinking that it will be that the longer stuff that is the stuff that not necessarily saying that you don't want to do it, but these would, would be your least enjoyable session. Yeah. hundred So like the, the 250s, 300s. I yeah. I don't enjoy it. Yeah. I don't enjoy the lactic and this endurance because it's hard. Yeah. yeah, <laughs> well, yeah. I understand why it's so necessary. I'm going to love it if he says, come in today, couple blocks, that's it. <laughs> cool yeah. down. Okay. Everyone's going to love that. But at the same time, I do absolutely love it when I complete a crazy session because I'm like, okay, that's in the bank now. Like, that's one down. That's yeah. I'm one day closer. That's kind of how I look at it. So. Yeah, and it's been good actually having like the team and um, my training partners because we all really just help each other get through it. There's mm -hmm. uh, Tuesday and a Saturday, we turn up knowing we're going to be laid out. Yeah. Um, 
So we have to really help each other get through those sessions and be there for one another because you've got to dig deep. Yeah. And and you've sort of already answered this, I think, but like what, what's your favorite track session? So like, I mean, you said warm up a couple of blocks. Is, is there something, is there something you particularly like to do? I don't know if it would be like, if I had to guess for you, <clears throat> I'm going to try and guess this. Yeah. I, I would say, I would say something like flying runs. I would say something like, I don't know, like flying thirties or something like, 110s 120s as distance that I feel would suit you and be and, and you and you'd find that fun because you'd be good at it but I also don't really know you so I'm just like I'm just pulling <laughs> I'm pulling guesses out my backside um I love like 120s because I right. love coming off the bend okay I was close so, yeah but I would also love 90s mm -hmm. I love the fast stuff when it's like super technical you've got like six minutes in between eight minutes yeah you know you've got to go fast, but then he's like got the stopwatch out and he's like, "Yeah, I love that." Um, but then I also love a block session because okay. that's when I get to really practice what it's going to be like on a race day. Okay, all right. You know, yeah, with yeah. Your partners and stuff like that. So, yeah, don't and love the long runs, but I love completing them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was It's like a delayed gratification kind of thing, where it's like I know I've got to go through this, but it yeah. will feel I'll feel a sense of accomplishment off the end of it. Um, and then, so speaking about coming off the bend, then and I hadn't written this down as a question, but are, are we going to see you do more two hundreds? I know we saw you do some two hundreds before, I, and I feel like you've got the tools to be a great two hundred meter runner. From from, I really I believe see. that two hundred could end up being my more dominant event. Right. Yeah. Uh, so definitely this year we're going to be doing a lot more 200s last year I didn't go to plan because i didn't run the standard just didn't run right. the standard 2281 yeah. for 2280 and then i didn't run enough 200 in the season i ended the season on a pb 2261 mm -hmm. but um this year yeah 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 definitely you'll be seeing oh. me in the two <laughs> all right watch this space i'm looking forward to it all this right space. there we go and then just one last it's not even a question but obviously you're pretty active on social media, on Instagram. Yeah. I'm too, I'm too old for TikTok, so I don't know if you've got TikTok, but you have a YouTube channel where you, you, you're you quite active on YouTube and then it's sort of, I, I don't know, like it seems a bit more... No, I know. Well, more... The good news is I've been vlogging here in Tenerife, okay. so I've got a video coming out of my trip here. Bits and pieces, it's not going to make sense, but I'm going to put it all together. All right. Um. So, yeah, I've been vlogging whilst I've been out here and, yeah, you can find me on YouTube, TikTok, Downey, uh, Instagram, Daronita. Um, yeah, Snapchat, Daronita. Um, my Snapchat is more behind the scenes. So it's like a little bit of what you get on Instagram, but even more behind the scenes. Like, stuff that I can't really put on my Instagram story. So, okay. If you want to uh, see super behind the scenes, go there. <laughs> <laughs> and so, obviously, like your YouTube channel, it's like some of the vlogs have been, they've been really good. Have you, it, have you always been creative in that kind of regard? Is, would you describe yourself yeah. as a creative person? Yeah, I would say so. In college, I studied fashion, design. Right. Um, I did art in school and stuff like that. I've always loved to be creative. And um, for me, it's just, it's just more me. I'm into like that kind of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and I think, yeah, I do kind of show that in my socials and stuff. And I'm, at the minute, I'm really just trying to get my personality out there and just mm -hmm. kind of be more candid online because it can just be so serious at times. And I just feel like, it's way more interesting if you get to know the person, not just the athlete. So yeah, for sure, for sure. All right, Daryl, I just want to say thank you so much for joining us today. Thank um, you. Really appreciate it. It's been a great conversation. You've been a great guest, and I want to wish you all the best for Karlsruhe. Um, thank you. That's probably going to have taken place by the time this comes out, actually. Um, yeah. But yeah. Have a great 2023, and like looking forward to seeing you dominate some 200s this season. All right. Thank you. Thanks for your time. It was so good. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Bye. Yeah. <laughs>